Today I'm talking about breadboard ends on a tabletop. I have a tabletop here made up of four boards and as you can see, if I zoom in a bit, you can see the grain of the wood is going from me away to the other end. So the alignment of the grain is like this. Now the issue with a tabletop like this is over time it will curl. It'll basically bend up on the ends because there's nothing keeping it flat. So what we do is we make an attachment which we call a breadboard end. So it's essentially a piece of wood that we attach to the end of a tabletop to keep it flat. This board keeps it flat because the grain is going in this direction. So here you have the grain going that direction. The breadboard end goes like this and it'll essentially keep the top flat. So that seems nice and easy. So you've got the tabletop and all we do is attach the breadboard end to keep everything flat from curling. However, the issue is wood will expand perpendicular to the grain. So here the grain is going like this so the expansion will be like this. So what happens is the tabletop over time and through seasons it'll get wider or more narrow as moisture in the air changes. So we can't just attach the breadboard end in any old way. It has to be attached in a way that will keep the tabletop flat but also allow the tabletop to move as moisture changes in the air happen. Okay, so here I have a little drawing of what I was talking about. So I've got my boards for the tabletop running with the grain basically from the bottom to the top here. So it's moving in this direction. And the expansion and contraction will happen perpendicular to that. So these boards will physically move out or in as seasons change. The breadboard end, the grain is going this way and therefore this will expand back and forth which won't matter because there's nothing on the end of the table. The big thing here is we have to be able to attach the breadboard end to keep the top flat but we also have to allow that tabletop to expand. So basically we have to connect this piece to this piece but it has to be floating. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now there are a couple of different ways that people make breadboard ends. One really popular one I've seen and I've done before is you take the tabletop and you use a bit maybe something like this or you can use a router with this guy and basically it'll just make kind of a rabbit notch in the top and then you can take the breadboard end which is smaller and shorter you can take it onto your table saw with dado blade and dado this out then basically they just connect to one another now another way is you can actually have these two butt up against each other and then you have a tenon something that you could do with a festool domino and you can essentially just use these to attach it. The thing that allows it to expand is on the breadboard side you have smaller holes and on the other side, on the table side, you have a larger hole so this is allowed to move and basically the tenon itself is allowed to kind of slide within there and allow the tabletop to move as it expands. I did some research on YouTube and I found that this method is used quite a bit. So you can go onto YouTube, research breadboard end and nine times out of ten it seems you get this method so um, I don't really want to repeat other people's work because I you know it would be fun to maybe do something a little different um, this guy here this butt joint um, I have to have a domino to do that which I have one and I will be using it in my method but this one's maybe a little simple so I thought I'd do something different what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a mortise in the tabletop and in the breadboard end and then make a tenon that will attach between the two. And I'm only doing this method because I didn't see it done many times on YouTube, so I thought I would just show how I do it. And it kind of gives a really interesting look because what I'm going to do is this is going to be roasted curly maple, and then this I'm going to make a nice bright curly maple. So it adds a bit of a, an accent to it, and I think it just gives kind of a different look and kind of is, is unique. So we're going to go through that method. The big challenge here is making the mortise. The breadboard end, not a problem. We can just throw it across the table saw with a dado blade, is, which is what I will do. Um, otherwise, you could use a bit like this, and you could just run it across with the router a couple times. There's a lot of different varieties of this bit, so you can get a lot of different widths and sizes and stuff, so you can easily use that just to cut that rabbit out. Or you can use a router, 
it's a little trickier. You have to put a board up top and a board on the bottom and then put the table top on its side and then use a router across it. That's a little tricky. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to use a tool I don't use very often. I'm going to use my Festool Domino and I use it to make a mortise. Okay? So what I'm going to start doing right now is I'm going to start making the rabbit joint on the tabletop. So I'm just going to show you how I do that. Again, as I said before, you could use a router with a bit or you could use one of these bits that goes along and makes rabbit. Then you just kind of set it, just adjust your depth to get a thicker cut if you're using a bit like this. But there are better bits for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Festool Domino. What it does is it cuts mortises for these pre-cut tenons. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make cuts all the way along this face. And because it has, a, it, it's a really nice tool, and because it has a nice large face, all the cuts are, are very precise. So we'll be able to make a whole bunch along here and have no problem. And again, the only reason I'm doing this is because I just want to do something a little bit different than what I've seen on YouTube. So hopefully, uh, if you don't have one of these tools, you can use one of the bits that I've shown. But the idea is just making a mortise in this tabletop. So just looking at setting up this machine, this top is 24 millimeters thick. So I have this set to cut halfway through. So the center of the mortise will be 12 millimeters and I'm cutting 30 millimeters in. So that's how deep I'm gonna make this mortise, okay? And this is a billet of wood I have right now that I'm going to make the tenon with. So the tenon will go into the mortise in the table and the mortise in the breadboard end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by cutting a piece that is the thickness required to fit the mortise on the table. <clears throat> the cutter on the domino is about 8 millimeters. So I'm going to cut this piece of wood just a little bit larger than 8 millimeters because what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it. I'm going to cut, test, and then if it's still too thick, I'll just keep coming back and trimming it down a tiny bit to fit the mortise properly. So I'm going to start cutting my tenon. So I wanted to make another note just before we carry on. This tabletop is just a little bit bigger than 27 and a half. The end measurement I need is 27 and a half. I've left it slightly wider because when everything's said and done I'll actually trim off the edges to get it to the right width and then it'll cut off any excess material. So just as a note I actually made this quite a bit wider than 27 and a half so you'll notice it's wider because I'll cut it off afterward. Okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick test on this piece that I just cut. So this is the tenon and this is going to the tabletop. Okay, so that's a nice fit. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. That's a nice fit. We'll just take a look at what this looks like. So I have some scrap left over from when I cut the end here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my dado blade and I'm going to use this extra cutoff to test exactly where I need the blade to sit. We need to know where we need to place the mortise in the edge of the breadboard but we also need to figure out how deep we need to make that. So those are two different measurements we'll start figuring out with the scrap wood, okay? Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit of testing on my scrap piece of wood. And basically what I'm trying to see is how far from the fence I need the dado blade to exist. So I just made a notch in there. And if I measure that up, it's really, really close. So that's exactly where I need that blade depth, sorry, the blade height to be or the distance from the fence. And also I measured this width and I got the exact same measurement there. So I know two measurements now. I know where I need my fence to be set relative to my dado blade and I know the depth. So I'm going to make that initial cut on this board. 
So again, I've set up my dado blade. I know the height that I need to make my first cut, and I know the depth. So I'm going to start by making my first cut on this board. Okay, so I've made my notch in the side of the breadboard. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to adjust the fence, making this wide cut this cut wider, and I'm going to make it wider until this tenon fits inside the mortise. Okay, so what we've done so far is we made a mortise in the table end, we cut a tenon, we got that tenon to fit, and then what we did is we cut a mortise in the breadboard end, and we used the table saw to repeatedly cut it to fit it, and now it's a very nice fit, nice and tight. You can see that joint there is really nice. And now what we do and slide this guy in. And as you can see, it's a very nice fit. So there's hardly any gap there. Once we clamp it and glue portions of it, it'll come together really nice and tight. So right now, you can see we have the overhang that we're going to cut off later but if you look it's a really nice fit with everything and now what we have to do is we have to attach it so I'm going to show you how we do that okay the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my tenon into the breadboard end of the mortise okay and I want to be pretty careful with the glue here because the whole idea of this is you only want the breadboard end connected in certain places so you can't just have glue everywhere I'll explain that later but for now we just know that we're gonna glue the tenon into the breadboard end mortise and we want to be careful with the glue we don't want to get it all over the place okay So I've got glue spread in there nicely. The reason I didn't put glue on the tenon was because when I put this in, it'll all squeeze out and be left along this ridge. We want this ridge to be very clean. We'll still probably get glue there, but you just want to limit how much you're going to get on that face. So, And another thing, I mark the top. So that's a good thing to do. Always have your pieces marked. This is the top of my, my breadboard end, so we'll just be mindful of that. So I'm going to slide this guy in. Okay. okay, we didn't get too much glue, there's a little bit. As it dries, we'll clean it up with a chisel. I'm going to put a couple clamps on just to keep it pressed in nicely. I won't put too much pressure on it. Okay. Just enough to keep the tenon placed nicely within the breadboard end. Okay. Okay, so we have those clamps on. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back in about 20 minutes and we're going to scrape this little tiny bit of glue that's going to be pushing out. We'll make sure this joint is super clean. Okay, so I finished gluing the tenon into the mortise. I was sure to use a chisel to clean this whole spot out so if you look it's really nice and clean. There's no glue in there impeding the joint that we're about to make. Okay so that's all done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick dry fit to see how everything works here.
again, you'll notice that I've left material on either end. And I've left that on there because we're going to cut it off afterward. Okay? So the other thing I've done right now is I've actually set up a bit of a fence on here for clamping. One of the first things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually clamp the tabletop to the breadboard end nice and tight. Okay? So what I've done is I've just taken a piece of scrap wood, I've clamped to the top, and I'm going to use that as a fence for clamping. If you had long pipe clamps, you could just use those, but I have some, they're a little bit cumbersome, so for this example, I'll just show you how I use this little fence. So I just take my clamp and squeeze the breadboard end in, okay? Squeeze this in on each side. Okay, now the reason we're doing this is we want to check this joint. So I'm going to take the camera, we look, there's no gap here. Okay, if we look all the way across, there is no gap. That's what we want. We want this to be a very nice tight fit. If you were to look at this joint and you saw a gap anywhere, you'd probably want to go back and straighten this board out okay so if your joint isn't perfectly flat on the table side or on the breadboard side that means one of these two isn't a straight cut or there's an undulation or something so okay at the moment I, I have my breadboard end dry fit to my tabletop the breadboard end again keeps the table flat we have physically glued the tenon to the breadboard end. So that is a single piece of wood functioning as one piece. Okay? But the idea of a breadboard end is it's going to keep the tabletop flat by creating a, a force that's linear across the tabletop. Problem is, the tabletop expands differently than the breadboard end. The breadboard end expands this way, the tabletop expands this way. So, they need to be attached to one another, but floating. <clears throat> so what we do is we put glue in the middle. So we glue the, the tenon and the breadboard end to the tabletop just in the middle. So we take a small area there where there won't be a lot of wood expansion, and we physically lock it in place using glue. The ends, however, will be floating. So what we do is we need to lock the, the tabletop and the breadboard end together without using glue. So what we do is we use a dowel. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole through the tabletop, through the tenon, and out the bottom. And what that does, it will lock the tabletop to the breadboard end, but the hole in the tenon will be an oval. So when the tabletop expands, it can move. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay, so I've added something to my setup to make sure that we're getting the proper joint created. What I've done is I've taken a call and clamped it to the tabletop and the breadboard end. So you can see where I have that positioned. I've done this because it's crucial that this is flat. Okay, you want your breadboard end to be flat with your tabletop. So if you look, that's nice and flat. If you start clamping with these clamps, it'll tend to push upward. The breadboard end will tend to curl up, and you want to make sure that this stays super flat. So right now, my setup is I have a board for these clamps to hold it in place to pull the breadboard into the tabletop. And then I have these calls on the end to keep the breadboard end flat to the tabletop. Again, that's super crucial, okay? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the actual holes that we're going to start to drill. So we're looking at the one edge of the breadboard end right now. You can see the tabletop, the tenon, and that is glued into the breadboard end. Now what I've done is I've made a mark right here. 
I pick the center point of the amount of tenon that is going into the tabletop. This is the center. Now I moved this line one inch from the edge simply because I think it looks nice. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Forstner bit, this is a 3 8 bit, to cut a hole in the tabletop. I'm using the Forstner bit because it makes a very nice, perfect round hole. After I go through the top, I'm going to use a 3 8 bit to finish the hole that goes all the way through. After that, we're going to pin it with a dowel. Okay, so the dowel goes into this hole and it, it will lock the breadboard end to the tabletop. Okay, so we'll go through exactly how we do that. But for now, what we're doing is we're piloting a hole through the tabletop into the tenon that's going to fit this maple 3 8 dowel. Okay, so I have my Forcer bit ready. I'm going to make sure that I hit the mark right in my crosshair. Drill down. So I'm going to continue this hole with the drill bit. As I get closer to the bottom of the hole, I take a piece of scrap wood, I hold it underneath to prevent tear out. Okay, so that worked really well. It reduces Sorry, I can't show you on the camera right now, but it reduces tear out. Basically, you just put force on the back of the tabletop to keep wood from being torn out. So that just keeps it nice and smooth. Okay, so now we have a hole that goes all the way through the tabletop, through the tenon that will lock the breadboard in place. Okay, actually, you can feeds in there quite nicely. So that's perfect. Okay, now we'll do the other side. Okay, so here's the crucial step that we've all been waiting for. How does this allow the tabletop to expand and contract? This dowel is going to go through the tabletop, just like so, okay? So this is going to be fixed. It's going to be a fixed position. Now, if the tabletop is expanding back and forth, that means this dowel that's locked in place on the tabletop is going to have to move. So what we have to do is we have to ovalize this hole because what happens is as that tabletop expands and contracts that dowel is going to keep moving back and forth. The force on this edge keeps the tabletop pulled into the breadboard but it has to be able to move side to side. So what we have to do is we have to expand this hole laterally but not longitudinally so we do not want to affect this distance here this distance is what pulls the breadboard into the tabletop what we have to do is we have to expand it in this direction to allow the tabletop to move we have to keep this distance here to keep the breadboard pulled into the tabletop okay so what we're going to do is we're going to ovalize this hole Okay, so we're looking at the hole that we created in the tenon on the breadboard end. Um, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to expand this hole to allow the tabletop dowel to be able to move back and forth. So again, we do not want to touch these edges. We only want to expand it outward. Now if you look online, you can find formulas for wood expansion. And those formulas will tell you Based on the area that you live in, your relative humidity, the type of wood you're using, and the seasonal changes, and it'll tell you roughly how much your tabletop is going to expand and contract. So you take basically the width of your table, type of wood, 
your moisture content, and it'll tell you roughly how much this tabletop is going to expand. I did the math. I figure it's going to expand between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. I think quarter is a little high, but in my area, I actually get some um, humidity that's anywhere. Like, for instance, right now, my humidity is 12%. In the summer, I get up to about 65%. That is a huge range. So my tabletop is going to expand quite a bit. So I figure being safe, if I make this expandable approximately an eighth of an inch and the other side an eighth of an inch, it should give me about a quarter inch. So that's plenty of room. So that's how I'm going to determine how much to expand this. So if I actually do some marking on here, this is three eighths. So I'm going to go about probably about 3 16 on each side just roughly you don't want it to be too loose but there we go so those are my marks roughly okay I want to expand it about that much on each side okay now <laughs> I have seen people take a drill and they go like this back and forth to make an oval which is fine I mean I I'm sure it works well um, <laughs> I've done that before and I find that it can wander this way sometimes and actually affect this distance. So I've stopped doing that. This rasp is just under three eighths of an inch so it'll work really well for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it to shape the hole. Again, I don't want to go this way or that way, only this way, okay? Okay, we'll do a quick test. This goes in here. Okay. So, this is what I was talking about, the expansion. So, if this dowel is locked to the tabletop, now the tabletop can, can move within here. There will be no glue here. There will be no other joinery or, or anything to adhere this. It will just be the, this dowel pulling the tabletop in. But now it can move and it can expand and contract as it wants. Okay? So the tabletop will be locked here, and it'll just move back and forth as it needs to. Glued in the middle, floating here, this dowel keeps it in place. Okay, we're going to get ready to attach the breadboard end to the tabletop. So what I have is I have my dowels that I've cut down to be significantly w taller than the thickness of the table because they're going to go all the way through. I've also sanded them so they're slightly tapered so you don't have any issue trying to get the dowel into the hole and it won't damage the edge. Another thing I forgot to mention, I do have a center mark so you want to make sure when we originally drilled the holes through you line up your center marks so these holes are centered with these holes. Okay, that's the other thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our glue ready. I'm going to be using the clamps to pull the breadboard in again. And I'm also going to use my calls for flattening the tabletop relative to the breadboard end. So here we go. Okay. The first thing we need to consider is where we put the glue. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to put glue in the center of the board. That's the only place we want it. Now, I'm probably going about four inches or so because that's kind of the area that will be locked in place and not a lot of expansion should happen there so that amount of solid connection should be fine. So I'm going to spread the glue on the mortise, sorry, on the tenon. Spread the glue on both sides of the tenon. Okay, so I have lots of glue on the mortise and the tenon, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my center mark, okay? I'm going to gently tap it in. Again, no glue, no glue, there's only glue in the center. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my calls on. So I want to make sure everything's kept nice and flat. Nice and flat. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring the, using clamps, I want to bring the breadboard in tight to the table. Okay, so that joint looks nice and tight. The middle is tight. We have squeeze out. Okay, this side looks nice and tight. I'm really happy with that. Okay, make sure this stuff is nice and tight now. Tighten that up a bit. Tighten that guy. Again, double checking, make sure everything's flat. Yes, it's nice and flat. Perfect. Okay, so I'm on this one side of the table and I'm just getting ready to put the pin in. So what I've done is I've taken some sandpaper and tapered the end so it has no issues getting the dowel into the hole. Uh, the other thing I've done here is I've marked two lines on here. So this purple line and this purple line, that's the thickness of the top of the table before it hits the tenon. Okay, so that's just the thickness of this part of the tabletop above the tenon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some glue and put it above that purple, bottom purple line, okay? So I'm putting lots of glue on there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to put the dowel in. Okay, and hopefully you can see my purple lines there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pound it in to the top of that purple line. So, so there's the bottom of where the glue starts. I'm gonna keep pounding it in, okay? And I'm going to stop at that purple line. So there was only glue on the dowel, the thickness of the tabletop above the tenon. Therefore, you'll only have glue contacting this part of the table, not the tenon, because we need this to be able to move. We ovalized that hole, and so now the tabletop can move, and the dowel can move within that ovalized hole.